Hello there, we're back with all the big news from Azeroth this week. And when I say big news, that's not hyperbole. This week has seen some pretty major announcements from Blizzard. Don't worry if I sound a bit different this time around. I'm getting over a head cold and my throat bears the scars of quite a persistent cough. But enough about my mind flu, let's get into the news. First up is the launch of the 1027 PTR and the reveal of the time running Pandemonium event. This event has been rebranded to Pandaria Remix and introduces an all new alt leveling system that will enable us to level from 10 to 70 at what Blizzard describes as an accelerated rate, going through a tweaked version of Mists and Pandaria which includes all the max leveling questing like the 5.1 campaigns, scenarios, dungeons and even raids. Yes, raids will leveling up. There's a revamped gearing system including a new upgradable artifact cloak whose progress applies account wide and comes with a 324% XP buff. Yes, you did hear that right. There's a new socket system with gems that offer powerful new effects that in many ways seems very similar to the Season of Discovery Glyph system. Cosmetic rewards haven't been forgotten with a new old currency called Bronze that can be used to purchase transmog mounts. There's actually 32 new mounts in the PTR mount journal for this event and more. The way it will work is that when you create a new character, you'll have the option of making it a remix character. It will then start at level 10 in Pundaria. Remix characters won't have access to the auction house, so they are somewhat isolated from live, but you do create them in normal realms and you can join live guilds. But don't worry, Blizzard have said that at the end of the event, and we don't yet know when that is, my guess is it'll be on or before the war within PTR dropping, those characters will be converted to normal characters that you'll be able to use in the next expansion and by even getting extra character slots to accommodate them. As a lover of leveling and questing, it's fair to say that my initial reaction to all of this is super positive. I've always wanted Blizzard to do more with leveling to allow players to experience more of the story rather than just having to drop it halfway through after a couple of zones and their willingness to experiment with gearing and other rewards is great to see. My one qualm is the limited time nature of the event. 32 mounts, for example, is a lot, and if the event requires the amount of effort we'd normally expect from farming 32 mounts, that could feel very pressured against an as yet unannounced deadline. I don't know about you, but the FOMO in the game is one area that I've not been enjoying in Dragonflight. That said, this does enable Blizzard to take risks, such as the extremely powerful gearing systems in the isolation I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to reserve judgement on this until we've had some more time with this event to see how it feels in practice. Now that's not the only things coming in 1027. Unlike 1026 which only really had Plunderstorm, this patch has quite a lot more in it for us to get our teeth into. We're also getting the Troll and Draenei Heritage armour with new quest lines, a new campaign quest line called the Harbinger quest which is likely to be a prequel for The War Within and a new holiday event. Hunters are also going to benefit from an improved user interface for their stables and improvements to how they interact with their pets. There's also a couple of more quest lines on the PTR that I'm going to cover later in PTR Watch as those do involve some minor spoilers. And it's not just open world enthusiasts that are feeling the love. There's a major revamp to the Mythic Plus custom made group finder with the ability to filter based on things like unfilled roles, specific dungeons, leaders rating to name just a few. Many of these changes will be quite familiar to the users of those Mythic Plus dungeon filter add-ons that are out there but having them baseline I think will be very welcome for many of us. Overall it's fair to say that this is a lot of content for a minor patch and I do hope that despite Pandaria Remix being limited time, Blizzard can use this as a platform to make further improvements to the leveling system in future. Last week I reported that Blizzard had doubled the spawn rate of the Primal Storms to support players working in their world awoken meta achievement. Sadly, this fix didn't stick and over the weekend the spawn rate returned back down to 1, with a further bug in the Primalist Future area meaning that we even got zero storms on some occasions. Blizzard have now posted an update to say that they are working on a more comprehensive fix to address both of these issues 
and to ensure that we go back to consistently getting two storms. Most likely this will go live with the reset next week. Staying in the subject of the meta achievement and players who got the new mount Taiwan early have spotted a stealth nerf in its size. The good news is that following some fairly robust feedback from the community, Blizzard have provided an update that the nerf was due to an animation bug and that they plan to restore him to his original size in patch 10 to 7. It's great to see that this reward isn't being permanently nerfed, but it does seem to me that had this been announced in advance, much annoyance and disappointment in the community could have been avoided. Back in November 2022, we got the terrible news that Blizzard was shutting down the Chinese World of Warcraft servers following a breakdown in negotiations with NetEase, the Chinese company that ran the game for them in China. It's fair to say that that breakdown was very angry with some harsh public comments from NetEase's president and reports that the issues stemmed right from the very top of Activision Blizzard. The good news is that these issues have now been resolved with the announcement that Blizzard and Microsoft are once again working with NetEase and that the Chinese servers will be relaunching sometime this summer. As I understand it, many Chinese players did migrate to either US or Taiwanese servers, but with so much time and effort tied into character accounts, I'm sure that being able to regain access to their accounts will be welcomed by a lot of the players in China. Personally, I can't imagine losing my characters in World of Warcraft. NetEase, in a letter to players, have said that they're currently working with Blizzard to find ways to help players catch up and to access any limited time items that they may have missed out on. One surprising change is that over the season of Discovery and self end service, new accounts are no longer able to trade or mail gold or to use the auction house until 30 days have elapsed on a paid subscription. This change was initially unannounced due to the nature of the target audience, i.e. botters, but now that players have been running into the limitation, Blizzard did share an update to confirm that this is something they are testing and monitoring very closely. The announcement did imply that this could be spread to the rest of the game if it's a success, but Blizzard have promised that they are opening to tweaking it to mitigate any issues that may come up. Stopping botting is surprisingly difficult for gaming companies, as the major botters, that is the ones who actually impact us in-game, usually have the technical skills to overcome most ways that companies have to detect previously banned players signing up on fresh accounts. This will no doubt make life much more difficult for casual and smaller botters, but for the big dogs, while they will doubtless be disrupted in the short term, I'd be surprised if they don't quickly find ways around it. The one concern about this is that it's really not great for new players, at least at first glance. That said, Blizzard will likely have some data around how much new players do use the trade and the auction house. And when I think back to when I was a new player in Legion, honestly, I didn't touch either until I hit level 65-ish, which probably took me a lot more than a month to do. That said, if they wanted to expand this to the modern game, I do think that they would need to do a pass to avoid things that push new players towards the auction house. For example, every week or so, I see someone in WoW's newcomer chat asking about how to get a standard scope after finding the selfie cam quest in Stormwind and having to tell them that they would need to wait a month just to complete a quest is obviously a terrible experience. Unlike us old hands who are pretty tolerant of a bit of jank, new players have less ties to a game and stuff like this can really put them off entirely. I do welcome anything that contains the botting problem, but MMOs need players to thrive and putting new players off just feels like too high a cost to me. But what do you think? Will this help to reduce the scourge of botting? Have you been affected by false positives? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving on now to PTR Watch, which is where we run through the latest news from betas, PTRs and data mining. And there's a few extra discoveries to emerge from the 1027 PTR. Be aware that this section will include spoilers, so feel free to skip the rest of the video, though I am going to make a point of avoiding any major story spoilers. There's a few minor but interesting revamps, with a small expansion to the Void Elf starting zones to Logris Rift, which I suspect may be related to the upcoming Harbinger questline. Legion Dalaran also gets some changes to NPCs in several areas, some of those which seem to be setting up a new storyline. I'm going to say no more on that as that one could be super spoilery. Bellameth gets a new boat ride connecting it to Gulneas. 
Something that's super cool in my opinion, these docks have felt very strangely underused, but portal from Stormwind to Gonaeus when, please, Blizzard? There's also some more extra quest lines. One involves Scale Commander Emberthrow trying to decide in a visage form, and there's also one called Sins of the Sister that's set in Belameth. There's some very early signs of updates to the Midsummer Holiday event with a couple of back pieces and some interesting swimwear outfits data mined by Wowhead. But to date, no signs or hints of the new holiday event that's mentioned in the roadmap. No surprise there, as I think that's something that will be heavily encrypted. On the gear front, there's a new personal tabard which appears to be customizable. My guess is that it's going to be a personal version of the Guild Tavern. It's going to be interesting to see if Blizzard will offer us more customization options in this than we get in the current Guild Taverns. Moving over to the 10 to 6 PTR, and we've seen another round of dungeon nerfs. This side to Brackenhide, Knockhood, and Ruby Life Pools, and Alderman. There's no doubt in my mind that these dungeons are going to feel very different to what we experienced in Season 1 and 2, and I'm a fair bit more optimistic about Season 4 than I was a few weeks ago, albeit I still don't think it's going to quite reach the heights we saw in Season 3. This coming Monday, I will be releasing my Season 4 Preview and Survival Guide, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified when it goes live. One final piece of news is the first appearance of patch 11.0 in one of Blizzard's encrypted vendor feeds. These feeds are often the final step before a patch is opened up more widely, and this makes me think that Alpha could be coming extremely soon, possibly even next week. With the pace of new news starting to seriously heat up, don't worry, I'm going to be here to cover it all. But that's all for this week. If you've enjoyed this week's update, do make sure to let me and YouTube know by hitting that like icon. Thanks for watching and I will be back again real soon.